Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be talking about how to balance sleep and wellness. For that, first we need to understand how much quality of sleep we need and how much quantity of sleep we need in order to balance sleep and wellness. So, I am Dr. Shahnaz, I am an Ayurveda physician as well as a certified smoothie meditation practitioner. So, today I will be talking about how to assess your quality of sleep as well as quantity of sleep and how to balance your sleep and wellness through Ayurveda. What is sleep quality? Sleep quality assess how well you sleep during the night. Whereas, when it comes to sleep quantity, the quantity of sleep is just an aspect of sleep quality. That is, how much you sleep. The amount of sleep that we have estimates the quantity of sleep. And that also determines the quality of sleep that we are having. Now, how can we assess sleep quality? The first one of the measure to assess sleep quality is your sleep onset latency which means how quickly and how easily you can fall asleep when you are in your bed so if it is taking like more than 20 to 30 minutes after you go to bed to fall you to make you fall asleep then that is okay but what if it takes more than that what if you are on your bed for more than one or two hours that means your quality of sleep or your sleep on onset is not proper. You cannot fall asleep as quickly and as easily as you should. So that affects your quality of sleep. The next measure is sleep continuity. It is the ability to stay asleep once you fall asleep. So once you are sleeping, if you are able to sleep without much breaks, then that shows that you have a good quality of sleep. High quality of sleep is always continuous. That is, you will be able to stay asleep once you fall asleep. Your sleep would be continuous, not much interrupted or not much disrupted during night. So that assess your sleep quality the next one is sleep efficiency now when you when we say about sleep efficiency it is how much time that we spend sleeping versus how much time that we spend trying to sleep which means you're on your bed you're sleeping but you are trying to fall asleep these two are different right you can have a deep sleep as well as you can have a try that you have you are having during the night that you want to sleep so this time both this time when we compare that is the sleep efficiency and researchers or studies shows that you must at least sleep 85 percentage of your total time in your bed that is the minimum benchmark for proper sleep quality then the next is sleep timing. At what time you are going to the bed? So when you sleep in a given 24 hour period, according to the circadian rhythm, you must sleep during the night and you should be alert during daytime. Right? What if you are not you know, sleeping properly during the night or you start your sleep schedule, for example, like at 2 a.m. And then you are asleep till 11 a.m. in the morning. Then your circadian rhythm is disrupted. But if you are sleeping at 10 p.m. and waking up at 5 to 6 a.m. in the morning, that is actually naturally in rhythm with your routine. So that shows proper sleep timing. And also, if you are a person who sleeps like no, 10 p.m. on one day, the next day you sleep at 12 a.m., the next day you may sleep at 2 a.m., and then the next day again at 10 p.m. So, there is no proper timing for your sleep. You don't have a proper schedule. 
that will also affect your sleep quality so in order to assess your sleep quality your sleep timing should be like in tune with the circadian rhythm that is you would be sleeping by 10 or 11 pm the maximum and then getting up at 5 6 or 7 am respectively and you should be following this schedule throughout like every day sleeping and waking at the same time every day now another standard to assess your quality of sleep is how alert you are during the waking hours that is the body's ability to maintain wakefulness you are able to stay awake sometimes we feel sleepy during the day hours as well right you don't feel you no know, refreshed after sleep you don't feel like you are able to function with your full cognitive and physical capacity that's when we can understand like how how much quality of sleep you had last night then the next one is sleep satisfaction how much satisfied are you with your sleep how well rested you feel so this depends on both upon waking as well as throughout the day throughout the day how much rested you feel because of the perfect sleep that you had the night before that assess your sleep quality so basically there is these following characteristics which can give you or make you understand like whether you are having a good quality of sleep the so first one is you fall asleep soon after getting into bed within 30 minutes or less you are not awake in your bed even after 20 30 minutes that does not mean that you do, you are doing some work or you know you are having something you're watching something on the phone then that all can affect the sleep but apart from that if you are able to sleep at least within 30 minutes as soon as you go into the bed that gives you a good quality of sleep then the next is you typically sleep throughout the night you don't wake up more than once per night you don't wake up at 2 am 3 am 4 am or anywhere in between more than twice and it's not breaking your sleep as well that means you are waking up at 3 am and then you are not able to fall back asleep that is also not happening then that can give you a good sleep quality then the next is you are able to sleep the recommended quantity of sleep that should you should have that is you are not having less sleep or you are not oversleeping as well and then you fall back asleep within 20 minutes if you do wake up so in between if you wake up you are able to fall back asleep again within 20 minutes and finally you feel rested restored and energized upon waking up in the morning and throughout the day these are the characteristics which completely make us understand how much good quality of sleep are we having now how can we assess sleep quantity basically according to the center for disease control and prevention we have a recommended quantity of sleep that we should have according to our age for example like newborns are recommended to sleep at least like 14 to 17 hours per 24 hours and when it comes to infants that is less than 1 year they sleep 12 to 16 hours in a day and when it comes to toddlers they sleep 11 to 14 hours in a day whereas it when it comes to preschoolers this 3 to 5 years they should sleep 10 to 13 hours per day and when it comes to the school age like 6 to 12 years they should sleep 9 to 12 hours per 24 hours and teenagers that is from the age group of 13 to 18 years they should sleep 8 to 10 hours now coming to the adults that is us from 18 to 64 years we should sleep at least 7 to 9 hours per night and also 65 plus years old age can also sleep 7 to 8 hours per night 
So this is the recommended amount of duration of sleep one should have according to their age. So an adult coming in between the age group of 18 to 64 years should sleep at least 7 to 9 hours per night. Now let me know through the comments how much duration do you have in your sleep? How much amount of sleep do you have in a day? And also, is your sleep quality effective? If yes, which one, which one of the characteristics are you having? Like, which is affecting your sleep quality? Is it like you are not able to fall asleep within 20 minutes? Or is your sleep interrupted that you wake up more than two to three times per day or per night? How it is? Let me know through the comments. Now, how can we improve sleep quantity and sleep quality? Even though chronic sleep deprivation is problematic, there are many ways to improve sleep quantity as well as sleep quality. Let's look into that. The first one is addressing underlying issues. There could be certain reason that you are finding your sleep disturbances or your sleep is interrupted or you are not able to fall asleep. So you need to address the medical issue which impacts our sleep. For that we need to discuss it with a doctor and all the most common medically induced sleep issues are treatable. So first understand why your sleep is disturbed. And then act accordingly. So what are the general lifestyle changes that you should make so that it does not impact your sleep negatively? Getting regular exercise. It is advised to sleep at least, sorry, it is advised to exercise at least 30 minutes a day in order to get proper sleep. And activities like cutting out cigarettes, alcohol, cutting out caffeine, all these can give you proper sleep and having a proper sleep schedule which is very much important so that you can have you know you will be having a proper sleeping time as well as a proper waking time so that your body gets adjust to that rhythm and accordingly your body will be ready to sleep during a proper time so maintaining a proper sleep schedule is also very much important in order to have a good quality and quantity of sleep. Now the next step is to invest in your sleep environment. Most of the people say that they get the best sleep in dark, quiet, comfortable environment. So make sure that the environment that you are sleeping is dark, quiet and is comfortable for you. How can we make it comfortable? Your mattress, your bedding, you know, if you are interrupted by any noise or light from outside, get some earplugs or blackout sheets to avoid these disturbances. And by that, you can make your sleep environment more comfortable and have a more comfortable sleep as well. The next one is going screen free. At least one hour before you go to bed, you should switch off. All the screens that you are possibly using like mobile phones, laptops, tablets, anything it is. So there are studies which have proved like bedtime phone use is associated with poor sleep. Sometimes you won't be able to sleep. Then at that point of time you may take up the phone and then scroll through the messages or you know any other app which will disrupt your melatonin surge. Melatonin is the hormone which can induce sleep in us. So it should be in an optimum amount for us to sleep properly. So that can be disrupted. And also you may lose track of time by use of this more of screen, screen usage. So that will also affect or delay your actual bedtime and then that won't be able to help you to have a proper sleep schedule and everything is affected. So going screen free is one of the most important things to have proper sleep routine. Now practicing sleep hygiene. Incorporating all these behaviors into your life, cutting down alcohol, smoking, caffeine, having a proper sleep schedule, having a nighttime routine, going screen free, all these come to the list of behaviors 
that you have to incorporate in order to have a property. And whenever possible, maintain the same bed time. Once in a while it happens like because of some emergency, we won't be able to sleep on time. Or because of some uh, preparations that you have for the next day. Or that happens occasionally. That's okay. Otherwise, try to maintain the same bedtime whenever possible. Now also, you can induce sleep by having a relaxing activity towards the evening. Like reading, taking a bath or meditating. So having relaxation techniques, all these can help to induce sleep with us. So these are the practices which you can incorporate in order to have a proper sleep schedule. Now coming to Ayurveda, there are three basic bioenergies in Ayurveda. Vata, Pitta and Kapha. So in this bioenergies, Kapha is the one which can induce sleep, which is mostly connected to proper sleep routine. Among these three bioenergies, Kapha is the one which can induce sleep or which induces the heaviness or tiredness towards the evening so that you are able to sleep properly. So, according to different body constitution, these bioenergies, the amount of bioenergies can differ. So basically, when you are a person who have more of predominance of water in you, or if you are having like water imbalance, then there are more chances that your sleep gets interrupted. You keep waking up in between the night, which shows that you have a water imbalance or you are a water predominant prakriti person. So in order to combat this interrupted sleep, you need to have fruits that increase kapha, which can increase the qualities of heaviness, stillness and smoothness so that you get proper sleep. And for that, you have to consume heavy foods like dairy products, coconut milk, meaty soups and stews, avocado, butter, ghee, porridges, which are also rejuvenating. So these can help to increase the kapha constitution or the kapha bioenergy in your body and that will help you to have a Opposite. Now coming to pitta predominant people or if you are having a pitta imbalance, then you would be the person who would find the difficulty to fall asleep, to initiate the sleep. So you may have noticed like whenever your work stress is so high or you had too much of acidic or spicy food in your diet, it affects your sleep. It affects your ability to fall asleep, which shows that there is a Pitta imbalance over there. And at that point of time, you need to have cooling foods which can balance the pitta levels like fresh fruits and dates. And always make sure that you have a moderate to heavy dinner if you are a pitta predominant prakriti person. Otherwise, you might wake up hungry in the middle of the night. So a little bit of light snack is always recommended for pitta prakriti predominant persons in order to have proper sleep or in order to make them fall asleep. Now there are other certain activities like giving a foot massage with warm tea, sleeping in a cool ventilated room using sweet cooling essential oils like jasmine and rose or covering yourself with a light blanket which induces, you know, which does not give you more heat but also will give you some amount of coldness. So, Likewise, if you can increase the cooling of your body, then your pitta gets balanced and that also will help you to fall asleep easily. Now coming to kapha bioenergy imbalances or persons who are having kapha predominant bioenergy predominance in them. They would be the persons who would be like oversleeping or they are called as heavy sleepers and they may tend to oversleep. So in order to combat this kapha imbalance or people who have predominance of kapha bioenergy in their body, they should include refreshing warm foods like vegetable soups and bitter greens which can combat these negative qualities of kapha. And also sweets should be avoided for dinner because sweets can increase the amount of kapha. So already you, are, you have a tendency to oversleep. When you have 
sweets like kabha increasing food that will again increase it and also a light post dinner walk will help regular dry brushing and dry udhvartana dry udhvartana means dry powder massage so usually we have heard about this massage with oils and all but definitely there are other types of massages with dry herbal powders so people who have this predominance of kapha bioenergy in them or having kapha imbalance having a dry powder massage can actually help to reduce this imbalances of kapha and always make sure that you wake up very early when you have a kapha imbalance there is a tendency to over so setting up an early wake up time and sticking to that is very important for people who are having kapha prakriti or kapha bioenergy predominance in their body so because of these bioenergy imbalances as i told there are certain sleep imbalances like having this interrupted sleep and having oversleeping or also finding a difficulty to fall asleep so these imbalances of these doshas or these bioenergies could be one of the reasons for your sleep imbalance so make sure that you are not imbalancing these bioenergies for that there are general certain activities which you can avoid like eating too much dry crunchy food like salads eating too much cold food like ice cream staying up too late and experiencing work related stress So experiencing work related stress can actually imbalance your sleep but there are many ways to combat this work related stress or to balance this work related stress so let's incorporate those activities and make sure that you are having a balance between your work life as well as the stress levels now chronic cases of insomnia or if you are have been affecting with these sleep imbalances for a longer period of time then there are many external treatments mentioned in ayurveda one of that is shirodhara which means pouring oil warm oil over your head like forehead and over the head also like cooling liquids if your pitta is imbalanced then cooling liquids can be poured over the forehead so likewise these shirodhara can help to manage sleep disorders there are also other external treatments which can help with sleep disorders like netra tarpana shirolebha shirolebha means applying a herbal pack over the head netra tarpana are eye nourishment therapies so likewise these external treatments can be taken by yourself with the help of a trained ayurveda practitioner will help with all the sleep balances or sleep related disorders so thank you so much for your patient listening and i hope this talk help you to understand certain imbalances related to the sleep and how to assess your sleep quality as well as sleep quantity if you found this useful please share it with your friends and family or relatives for them to have better knowledge about this thank you so much